Welcome to my latest video. Well, this is going to be sort of a follow-up video to a review that I did on a product not too long ago. This Asus AX89X router. Now, this is a very highly featured and somewhat expensive router, but it has some unique features. It's meant particularly for gaming, so it can be tuned for particular games even, as I showed in the original review of this. But the reason I bought it, and one of the key features to it that most people have been interested in, is the fact that it also has two 10 gig ports, in addition to eight 1 gig ports, which is a lot of ports for a consumer-based router. Well, I got a question from one of my viewers, I'll put it up on the screen right now, that basically got me thinking, and I decided this was worth a separate test, and of course, the video to follow. So in this video, I'm going to check both of those 10 gig ports. They're supposed to work independently of each other, and they should be configurable for either the local area network or the wide area network, which means that if you happen to have an internet service that provides more than one gig of bandwidth, let's say, you know, 2.5 or 5, or, you know, it would be great if somebody provides 10 at a reasonable cost, 10 gig that is, this router is supposed to be able to handle that. So what I'm doing in this video is testing it all out. And we'll see exactly what happens, whether or not it works as advertised in the marketing material. And this was also confused by the fact that the manual does not give you any details at all on how to configure it or the fact that it even really does that with those two 10 gig ports. It's very vague about them, to be honest with you, if you looked at the manual online right now. So stick around in this video and we'll see if they work as they're advertised. And if they do, then this router is worth the money I spent for it. And I would Again, recommend it to anybody who's interested in those particular features. So right now I have it configured as I last tested it. It's sitting here, fully connected to both the wide area and local area network. I only have a single PC on the local area network. In terms of connections, I have one local area network connector here, and I have the wide area network connected to the WAN port, the main one that is intended if you have a one gig WAN network connection. Here are the two 10 gig ports, as we all know about. That's the RJ45 one, and that's the SFP Plus. This one can actually handle multiple speeds, including the 10 gig, 5 gig, 2.5, and 1 gig. This one here can only handle 10 gig and 1 gig. So let's take a look at the configuration right now, and I'll show you how to make the change to the WAN connection in order to use one of those two ports. So here it is in the configuration I last left it in when I tested it out in the previous video. It is currently using my local area network as its wide area network, and then it's setting up its own local area network, which currently has one client on it, and that's my test bench. And if I click on this, you will see, just for purposes of testing to make sure it can get through to the internet. Now let's take a look at what we would have to do, and it's not clear in the manual at all, on how to change the wide area network connection to use one of the 10 gig ports. You first have to go into the WAN tab here under advanced settings. I assumed originally that there was a place here to change it. There is one for WAN aggregation and I did try playing with that. It has choices for the 10 gig RJ45 port but not the SFP+. However, if you then go into this dual WAN sub tab, if you look a little bit further down here, you will see something called basic configuration. It has two things you can do. Enable the dual WAN, which we're not doing. We don't have a secondary WAN. This does support that if you had two internet service providers. But this is the important part, primary WAN. And the primary WAN, you have a significant number of choices. You have the WAN port that we're currently using. You have the 10 base T 10 gig port, the RJ45. For some reason, it has a USB connector. I guess maybe you can actually put another WAN through a internet connector connected to the USB. That's what I would assume. And then you have the 10 gig SFP+. Plus. Let's start off by trying the SFP+. Plus. Let's see what happens if I switch it to that. So I click on this, and then I say apply. It's warning me that it's going to reboot the router. That's fine, and that's what it's doing right now. It's setting the various settings it has to do within the router configuration, and when it's completed, it will do a reboot. At the conclusion of that, I will turn it off immediately and put the SFP connector into the proper location on the router. 
Okay, it looks like it's complete. Okay, here we go. I didn't change any of the cabling. It's exactly as it was. We're still connected to the WAN port up to the modem to the internet. Still have the PC connected to that same port there. But take a look at these lights. It now has a red light on the WAN connector. That means it is not communicating with the wide area network through my modem and to the internet. It does see that it's connected to the LAN. It does not show connection to either one of the 10 gig ports. This one here that says 10 GB, that's for the RJ45 connector. It's not clear in the manual, but that's all that's for. And this one here that says SFP plus, that is the actual SFP connector. So now let me turn this off. I'll hit the little button back here. Turn it off. There's now no lights. And now I will put in the SFP plus connector to a fiber cable that is now connected to my wide area network. Right in here. We push that in and snap it in place. And then we will power it on and see what happens next. Not yet connected to the WAN. It's gone white. That means it's connected to the WAN. And what you see here is the SFP is now connected. It has a local area network connected as well. Okay, let's test it out. I have to log in again. And there we are. And as you can see, it still says it's a 10G SFP plus. Let me go ahead now and make sure that we are connected. Command prompt, let me do an IP config. And we are, it sees everything as it saw before. So we're looking good. That's the little local area network that it created and assigned dot one to this gateway. Now let's do a quick test. Let's see if we can talk to the internet. I have here speed test for the internet. Let me run it. This is how I ran it earlier today. Let me hit go again. I could actually switch over to this and take a look at the uh, adaptive QoS and I could take a look at the meters that are here. And as you can see, it's actually running the second part of the test, which is the upload bandwidth. So this is working fine. Come back over here, it's completed the test. And here we go. It's running at full speed, maybe even slightly faster, but just within the margin of error. So I wouldn't even count that. Let's go back over here. Let's go back to the WAN and let's change it. I'll go to the dual WAN configuration. And what I'm gonna do here is change this to the 10 base T. So I'm gonna run the 10 gig port through a regular 10 base T RJ45 connector, which is currently what I have connected up to a regular one gig port. Let me go ahead and say apply like we did last time. It has to go ahead and configure it before we can change the cables. And it's completed. Okay, here we are. We still have the same connections we had before. However, the actual wide area network is not connected. It has the red on it, but we still have the SFP plus connected. We do not have the other RJ45 connector connected at this point. That's still connected to the original WAN connector over here. So basically not being used. So now let me rewire it, recable it a little bit here. I will turn it off. Again, the lights are now off. I will remove the SFP connector. First the cable, then the interface. I'll put this back in here so that we don't get it dirty. It snaps in place. Save that for a minute. Now I will take this RJ45 that's currently in the WAN and connect it up to the RJ45 for the 10 gig that I have now defined as the WAN. And let's power it up and see what happens. Okay, it's coming up, it sees the power. We see wide area network, so it connected and now it's connected. Look at the 10 gig one is connected. As I showed before, that's where I have it. I have this one connected to the, to the WAN location. I did not touch the other one, the local area network one at all. I left that where it was. Let's go back and take a look at the menus. And as you can see, we have the WAN still connected in the menus to the 10 gig, 10 base T RJ45 connector. Seems to be working. 
let's make sure that we have the speed test. Let me go to the meters over here. Let me double check and make sure that it's still connected to here. So I will do the IP config one more time and we're still good. We still have the same addresses assigned. So the router did still recognize it. It recognizes it by the MAC address, the actual address of the interfaces. Come over here and hit go. As you can see the meters here, it is doing the test and we're jumping way up in percentage wise, 341, 42. And now we're trying the download. The numbers are not going to be exactly the same because it does have some buffering that actually adjusts the actual performance. But let me try it again. As you can see, it's within the margin of error. It's actually almost right on again. Same numbers, so it doesn't make any difference which one of those interfaces we use. Keep in mind that the fiber, the main advantage there is not speed when you have the cables relatively short. The fiber will gain performance when it's in a long distance connection. So we're good. What I want to do now is basically reverse this slightly. I am going to go back to the WAN. I will change back to the SFP plus as the WAN connection. And then I'm going to do the local area network on the 10 gig RJ45 connector just to show that both of those can work independently and one could be WAN and one can be LAN. I first have to apply this. Okay, all done. And over here, I've left the cabling as we had it. If we take a look at the lights though, we have no WAN, it's still red. We do have the RJ4510 gig connected and we have the LAN connected. So let me power it off and recable it. I'm going to disconnect this cable that's connected to the WAN, to the router that I'm using as the WAN. Move this cable, which is a 10 gig capable cable that I had in the local area network. And this is connected to the PC. I will connect the PC up to the 10 gig here. And I will take the SFP and I will put that back to the WAN. So I still have this all set up. So I'll put this back in here, push it all the way in, make sure it's sitting. So now we have both 10 gig connectors in play. Let me power it on and we'll watch it initialize. Everything is back up. We have all lights actually. We have the WAN connected. We have the LAN connected. We have the 10 gig RJ45, which is the one that's connected to the LAN. And we have the FSP Plus connected to the WAN. Both of those ports are in use. None of the other local area network connectors are in use. And we can see how it works now. We are back in. It is connected to the WAN as 10G SFP Plus. Let me go back over to the adaptive so we can see the scales here as we do some activity in the router. I will go back to this one. We will double check that this is the case. And everything is still the same. It assigned the same address to the PC itself. Even though we moved it from a 1 gig to a 10 gig port, it didn't matter. And we can come over here and we can hit go once again. And there we go. And as you can see, it's basically the same speed. It doesn't really change it because my internet is only, as you can see, 350 megabits per second. I just wanted to prove out the different interfaces that we happen to have here. So that concludes this test and as you can see, it all works fine.